Uh, I'm on page 183. It says, use the fact that heights in the United States males are normally distributed with a mean of 69 and a standard deviation of 2.5. To calculate each, show the shaded distributions and the calculate. You don't know. So whenever it says show the calculator command. You said page 183. 183. Um, don't worry about telling me the commands you typed in. It's it's okay. All right. So let's see. What we can do is we can just jump right onto Desmos and start doing these, and they should work out nicely. Let's see. So mean of 69. Let's go to normal distribution, functions. Okay, and they're saying it's height 69 and 2.5 is the height. All right, hey, question for you. The red line across the screen right now is way far out standard deviations how do i how do i get the graph to show up what up there on desmos tells us how to make it show up yeah that plus sign good all right so that's what the normal distribution looks like we don't have any area bound yet Shh. calculate the percent of males that are between 66 and 68 so you go down here and you change your limits to 66 to 68. So that shaded in region, Tommy boy, that shaded in region accounts for roughly 23% of the area underneath the curve. Now, the important thing to realize is when we are doing this, we are finding the percent of area for our region. Okay, but today's lesson, we're going to figure out what X value, aka what Z score, Z score is the same thing as standard deviation, that it would go with if we already knew the area. But don't worry, Desmos does it as well. Okay, all right. And then it says calculate the percentage of US males. So that was problem number one right there 23%. Um, and then calculate. What percent of U.S. males is less than 71.5 inches tall? So that means I want my lower to be negative infinity. And we're going to 71.5. 71.5. So that area that's up there, we're talking about 84.1% of the area under the curve would be people that are shorter than our males that are shorter than 71.5 inches of height and then let's see calculate the percentage of u.s males that are greater than 67.5 inches so that means i want to find an area to the right so i'm going to change my lower bound to 67.5 and my upper bound you can go infinity. So that area there, so 72.6% are greater than 67.5 inches tall. Um, number four, let's not worry about number four right now. Um, because if you plug 99th in, Calculate the male that is in the 99th percentile. The 99th percentile isn't you plug in 99 in for inches. So it, it, was, it, was, it was for tomorrow or today. All right. And then on the back side, page 184, you said, uh, it says uh, we have diastolic Blood pressure are normally distri distributed with a mean of 84 and a standard deviation of 12. So you have a less than 120 and a less than 180, but we're looking just at the diastolic. So we're looking at less than 80 and then between 80 and 89, between 90 and 99 and bigger than 100. 
So find the population of the category based on diastolic blood pressure. So if we want normal distribution, okay, so did they tell us, do we have a mean and a standard deviation they gave us? Yeah. The answer would be yes. So 84 and 12, comma 12. And then I'm going to hit the plus button. It, it, I don't have it. There shouldn't be anything for the limits yet, but they plugged it in there anyhow. Uh, so normal distribution, somebody in a normal range is less than 80. So I'm going to have my upper bound be 80. My lower bound is going to be negative or negative infinity. So you're talking about 36.9% of the population. Wow. 36.9% of the population, according to this, falls into the normal category. If this is, if, if this truly was true, this, this is a little alarming because you would hope we are healthier than we are, but unfortunately, this what data we're looking at here shows that we might not be as healthy. And then pre-hypertension, that's between 80 and 90. So my lower bound is going to be 80, and my upper is going to be 89. So 29% of the population, that area underneath the curve, 29.2% of the population is what they call pre-hypertension, meaning that you're not doing your heart any favors. And then stage one hypertension is between 90 and 99. So 90 and 99. So now you're talking about 20.3% of your population falls there. And then people who are in stage two hypertension Y'all know what hypertension does to your heart? So your heart is technically a muscle. What happens to a muscle when you work it a lot? What happens to people who work out a lot? What happens to their muscles? They get bigger. I have seen in the cadaver labs, I have seen human hearts four times the size so your human heart is roughly the size of your fist. So if you make your fist, your fist is roughly the size of what your heart looks like. Imagine four of those. I've pulled hearts out of people that are enormous. It doesn't mean that they're caring and loving. The size of your heart doesn't, okay? It means they're really unhealthy. You wanna know what, when your heart gets bigger, what gives up space to your heart? Yeah, your left lung. And I, that person who had the heart that was four times the size, their left lung was about one-fifth of the size of what it should have been because it just pushes away. The right lung still continues to work, so you could still survive, but it is not good. Uh, let's see. Give the Z-score for the person with a dystolic Blood pressure of 95, show your calculation. Oh, okay, so now we have to go back to go back to the whiteboard. So for problem number six, oops, come on, baby. All right, problem number six, we want to find the z-score. So remember, z-score is observed minus the mean over the standard deviation. So, if we had a person that had a 95, and then we know that the mean is 84 because that's given to us over the standard deviation of 12, so this person would have a z-score of 0.917. All right, question for you. When is it okay to use Desmos when we have the z-score? What's the difference we have to do with Desmos if we were still finding areas underneath curves. How do I use 
What's the big, big difference when we jump on decimals? Number? So, if I'm given a z-score, if you wanted to use this as a normal distribution, even though we know from our we know from our information given, if we wanted to plug this into Desmos, what we have to do is our mean would have to be zero and our standard deviation would have to be one in order for us to use the z score to find us the same area underneath the curve. Okay? If you have a standard deviation and a mean that's given and they give you a score and they don't ask for the z-score, then you plug your actual mean and standard deviation in. And then problem number seven says a person is considered to have high blood pressure that is too low when their diastolic is below 60. What is the z-score of that? Okay, and remember the z-score is finding us where the standard deviation is. So less than 60. So again, I'm going to find the z-score is observed minus the standard or the average of the standard deviation. So we're going to go 60 minus the 84 over 12. And if you did that math, you come up to negative 1.75. That means you are 1.75 standard deviations below the mean. And then what percent of the population would have a blood pressure that is too low? So then we have to jump back onto Desmos. And come on. Why are you doing this to me? Okay, who who broke this? Anybody? <laughs> I don't. I can't find my cursor. Oh, you said who, who broke this? Who broke this? Who broke this? Who broke it? There we go. All right. So we can. We can. What's that, Alex? We can go ahead and plug below 4%, so I'm going to go negative infinity here. And then we said uh, below 60. Is that what it was, below 60? Oh. What percent of the population have too low of a score? So 2.3% of the population would have too low of a too low of a blood blood blood. blood pressure. All right, friends, we are going to go on to our notes. All right. So we are going to 36, 36, 36. 77. 77? Thank you. All right. So I'm on page 77 of the notes. Page 77. So what we have done so far, so so far we've done this. We've, we've either been given a mean and standard deviation, or we use 0 and 1 if we're not given it. And what we're trying to find is percent of area or bound regions. So we're trying to find areas. That's what we had been doing. Agree? Okay. So what we're going to do now in Desmos will do this for us. 
we want to figure out we're given an area and an area so now you know right now that like you have an area that you have so desmos might give us like something like this which is 31.7 percent now here is the kicker if they ask for a percentile or if they give you a percentile that is the same thing does that make sense <coughs> I can't do a percentile if it's just a bound region, meaning the left and the right side are bound. So the percentile will not work in this situation where you have like just this shaded. This is not a percentile. Okay. If it is a picture that is you know, shaded all the way left, you know, going as far left as possible, and it ends, the area underneath the curve is can be given as a percent. Once that percent is given, that becomes a percentile. Yes, the bound area is also a percent of the area that we're shading, but that is not a percentile. Does that make sense? So a percentile, in order for you to use the term percentile, it has to be shaded all the way left. It's not bound by anything. That's why, so we have negative infinity that's way over here. Okay, it's shading all the way to that. Okay, that's the first thing to note. Okay, so um, so again, and hey, a Z score, we're on page 77, a Z score is a standard deviation that ha could have decimals or fractions. Does that make sense, the, the big difference between us? Okay, so not a percentile. A bound region is not referred to as a percentile. It could be a percentage of the area under the curve, but it can't be a percentile. And they're like, dude, what's the difference of words? Um, edge versus tile. Okay. So let's say we were given a problem. Let's say we were given some problem and they had told us We have this shaded region that goes forever to the left. So, is this, can this be referred to as a percentile in this case? Is that, could we refer to the question mark as the percentile? What did I say on the last screen? Hang on, let's go back. On the last screen, if you have the area that's given, like the 31.7, that can be referred to as a percentile, which basically means right here. This is where the percentile takes place. Because it's not a bound region on the left and right. The left goes forever. So that, that's where your percentile falls. So if somebody had an area of 0.317 or 31.7%, and it's shaded to the left, your percentile is the 31.7 percentile. That's where it's going to fall on the x-axis. Okay, so let's say we had this problem here. They gave us some average of, let's say we had an average of 105 and a standard deviation of 8, and they said that They told us that we were looking for, let's say, the 70th percentile. This means 70% of the area. So this right here is the value we're looking for. Okay? 
Does it make sense so far? All right. Does somebody have 105 for a mean written down, 8 written for a standard deviation, and 70 written down for the percentile? Because I'm going to decimal, so I don't have to go back and forth. All right. All right, here we go. So, this is how we're going to do it. What was my bound region? What, or what was my, uh, what was my mean? 105. 105. What was my standard deviation? What? Eight. Eight. Thank you. All right. So, we're good so far with that. You hit the plus button, it's going to give you this. So, this is exactly what we've just been doing. And I, and I can just go... I don't need to worry about finding the cumulative. So that's basically our normal, what our normal distribution looks like with a mean at 105 and a standard deviation at 8. Okay? Now, I want to figure out what percentile are we looking at? 70th, 70th percentile. Okay, so you do this exactly the same that you did so far. Okay? Now, as soon as I do this next command, the graph goes away. I'm sorry. I know you I know you love the graph. So you're going to put a period. You still with me? And then what you have to do under your functions, you're going to go find inverse so under distributions, the inverse CDF. So you click that, so it comes right next to it. The important thing is making sure you have the period. The period tells Desmos, oh, I, you're now looking for a percentile. Meaning if you have the percentile, you knew what the percentage on the curve was, but well, we're trying to find the X, actual X value, okay? And we wanted to define it as uh, the 70th percentile. 70% as a decimal is what? 0.7. Or sometimes in stats, they want to have 0 0.70. It's going to be the same answer. It doesn't really matter to me. Okay. So if you do this, so this means if you had somebody, so let's say there was, let's say the final exam was worth, I don't know, say 150 points. And the average was a 105 with standard deviation of eight. And I told you, you fell within the 70th percentile, but you want to know what your actual score was. If you were in the 70th percentile, you scored 109.2 on the test. Does that make sense? Now, again, the hard thing is when you're looking at this, I really wish Desmos could make the graph still show back up. Unfortunately, it goes away once you do the inverse CDF. Please remember to put the period, find the inverse CDF. You have your normal distribution with your mean and stuff like that. This would also work. If I did not know the mean or the standard deviation, you were going to plug zero and one in for those. Okay? So, um, the, the directions that are in the notes go along with the graphing calculator. So, let's go back to another situation let's just say let's say somebody said i fell at the 45th percentile okay so what we want to find is what standard deviation was that okay we're talking about 45 percent of the area underneath the curve which will be a little bit to the left of the mean because 45% isn't 50%. The mean's at 50%. So if I, if I just had this, what do I use for a mean and what do I use for a standard deviation? What would be a, a thought you all would have? If these were not given, what should I use? Zero and one. Zero and, one. and again, this will work the exact same way on the calculator. So... I'm going to go 0, comma, 1, and I said 45th percentile. 
45th percentile is 45%. 45% as a decimal is what? 0.45. So somebody in the 45th percentile scored negative 1.3 standard deviations or yeah, negative 0.13 standard deviations below the average. They're slightly below average on this test. Okay? So I want to give you some time to investigate this. Make sure you can find that on Desmos. I know some of you are not entirely engaged. But note, can you find that inverse CDF? Do you know where it's at? 3-6. Three dash six. So we will look at having page one eighty five and one eighty six, and a lot of it can be done on Desmos. So you're just, just you're just jotting down what Desmos has for an answer. Sound like a deal?